Hi friends, now let's begin with the next section of this video for immunization update and this is a continuation of the previous uh, video we had done today for universal immunization program. So in this uh, immunization section we will be dealing with one or two vaccines and we'll see how their implementation is taking place and what are the things we need to remember for our MCQ exam. So first vaccine that we'll take up is pentavalent vaccine. The pentavalent vaccine, as most of you must be knowing, it consists of three things. There is diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus along with H-influenza B and hepatitis B. So it's like a mixture of three vaccines, but they are tackling five diseases. That is diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, H-influenza B, and hepatitis B. First MCQ that we need to remember is that hepatitis B, zero dose, will be given as per schedule at birth within 24 hours. So hepatitis B zero dose is not affected by the launch of pentavalent vaccine. Hepatitis B zero dose has to be given within 24 hours of birth. So just a quick recall that at birth we are actually giving a hepatitis B zero dose plus BCG plus OPV at 6, 10, 14, now the things have changed and there is launch of pentavalent vaccine plus oral polio vaccine. At 9 months, we will have measles or few states are also doing a MR vaccine. So measles or MR vaccine plus vitamin A. For you to remember is measles vaccine only. At 16 to 24 months, there is measles too or few states or in fact many states have launched the MR program. This is measles and rubella. It's not mumps and rubella. It is measles and rubella plus please remember DPT booster dose plus OPV booster dose. And then at five to six months, so five to six years, there is again last is DPT booster dose. So that's a, just a quick recall that we uh, uh, under the government immunization program schedule, national immunization schedule, there is launch of a uh, pentavalent vaccine. Along with this, we also have, as we had learned in the previous video, that there is pneumococcal conjugate vaccine, PCV vaccines, plus there is rotavirus, plus there is uh, in, uh, injectable polio vaccines as well. So these are like a couple of your new vaccines. So you can remember these vaccines or you can see the previous video. Well, today uh, in this uh, section, we'll be talking of some new vaccines like pentavalent, and uh, pentavalent few other things question number two to you for you to remember pentavalent vaccine it's a single vaccine containing 10 doses containing 10 doses this is a single vial containing 10 doses the dose of the pentavalent is 0.5 ml intramuscular given in the anterolateral thigh left side it is given on the anterolateral thigh left side remember pentavalent vaccine is a freeze sensitive vaccine it is a freeze sensitive vaccine that means it is like uh, scared of cold so remember never to freeze pentavalents it's a freeze sensitive vaccine and it also has a vaccine vial monitor which tells us about the heat uh, tolerance of the vaccine no diluent is required it's a liquid vaccine so no diluent is required however Remember, it's a free sensitive vaccine. The pentavalent is applicable for six weeks onwards, six weeks up till one year. So if you get an MCQ that a child is coming to you who's 10 months of age, 10 months unimmunized, will we give pentavalent vaccine? Answer is absolutely yes. So it is given up till one year of age. Uh, it also includes pentavalent. Uh, this question can also be asked that pentavalent includes H influenza B. This is a new introductory vaccine. It includes H influenza B. Why are we giving H influenza B? H influenza B is a notable uh, causative factor for many diseases like bacterial meningitis. Bacterial meningitis. It is also responsible for many types of community acquired pneumonias septicemias and uh, other diseases like septic arthritis or epiglottitis. 
So just remember that H influenza B is a newly added vaccine for these diseases and uh, there's a single uh, vial containing 10 doses and uh, that's it for pentavalent. The next vaccine we can take up is a pneumococcal vaccine. A couple of questions can be asked on pneumococcal vaccine. It is a pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. Pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. It is available in two types. You can have a PCV10 and a PCV13. In PCV10 and PCV13, there are many serotypes. So it contains 10 serotypes and PCV13 contains 13 serotypes. Uh, PCV13 actually contains all 10 serotypes from PCV10. Plus it also contains serotype 3, serotype 6A and serotype 19A. These are the extra three serotypes in PCV13. So all this together combines PCV13. So you can remember 3, 6, 19. 3, nothing, no A, B, C, D, 6A and 19A. So these are the three added serotypes to PCV13 and uh, most of the countries are actually giving PCV13. The dose schedule, there's no big uh, randomized trials on uh, or meta-analysis on which one's better PCV10 or 13 but of course it seems like PCV13 would offer much more immunogenicity to the individuals to which it's being administered. So obviously many countries are going with PCV13. Uh, there's no head-on trial that which one is better, which one is not good. Th these trials are required right now but uh, that's it and uh, the, there are carrier proteins in this. The carrier proteins for this pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. In PCV13, we have the carrier protein as carrier CRM197 protein. This is the same carrier protein which is there in the H influenza B vaccine. It is the same carrier protein from H influenza B vaccine and this carrier protein is actually derived from corny, uh, corny bacterium diphtheria. So uh, it's a carrier protein vaccine using uh, 13 serotypes which includes all 10 serotypes from PCV10 plus 3, 6 and 19. It is given in two primary doses plus one dose or it can be given as three primary plus zero extra dose. So in India we are giving at two primary plus one dose. It is given at six weeks at Next one is not given at 10 but at 14 weeks and then the last one, the secondary dose is given at 9 months. So this is the schedule which is being followed in India for pneumococcal conjugate vaccine and uh, that's it for pneumococcal vaccine. Uh, there's a currently big hype about uh, another vaccine which is fairly important regarding the MR vaccine. The measles and rubella vaccine so measles and rubella rubella is ra27 by 3 strain measles is edmonston zagreb strain and these are like live vaccines live vaccines the dose is 0.5 ml it is given subcutaneous in the upper arm upper arm right side in the right upper arm so this vaccine is with diluent there is a special diluent with this vaccine and it has to be used along with the diluent which is being provided by the company or the factory from where it actually comes so that's it about uh, uh, the recent things about the new vaccines which are being added uh, just i'll uh, take the opportunity just give uh, maybe five ten minutes more five minutes more uh, we'll take the opportunity to discuss a few salient features about cold chain as well. So cold chain, if you see, cold chain is basically the temperature range is 0 to, uh, 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. In these, uh, there are a couple of vaccines which have, which have heat sensitivity or uh, there are a couple of vaccines which have freeze sensitivity. So if you see which are the heat sensitive vaccines, the heat sensitive vaccines, these are reconstituted BCG, measles, measles rubella or JE vaccines. These are the most heat 
sensitive vaccine please remember these are heat sensitive why somebody would come and ask you like why are these heat sensitive these actually all these vaccines they do not contain any preservatives and therefore if they are and therefore if they are open if they are open they also have a risk of contamination risk of contamination by staph aureus and therefore these vaccines are not under open vial policy so these vaccines are not under the open vial policy and there is risk of contamination from staph aureus and they do not contain any preservatives and they are heat sensitive vaccine remember reconstituted bcg measles mr vaccines all these are heat sensitive what's this open vial policy that's a new concept not a new concept we shouldn't say it's a new concept but it's an important concept that what is open vial policy open vial policy is whenever we open whenever at the field level any health worker or any multipurpose worker or any vaccinator will open the vaccine this vaccines has to be used within 4 weeks these vaccines should be used within 28 days or 4 weeks uh, from the date of opening of the vaccines and this vaccine can be used only if if the vvm is okay and if the vaccine is not frozen and if there is of course the uh, the expiry date has not reached so these vaccines can be used till 28 days which are those vaccines which have which come under the open vial policy under the open vial policy we have hepatitis b oral polio vaccine diphtheria pertussis tetanus uh, then we have pentavalent vaccine tetanus toxoids and uh, ipv as well yeah IPV as well, hepatitis B, OPV, DPT, pentavalent, tetanus toxoid, IPV, these are included under the open vial policy. Please remember BCG, measles, mumps, rubella, and J are not included in the open vial policy. Please remember these are not under the open vial policy. And uh, these are the vaccines which are under the open vial policy. That means you can use them. All these vaccines which are not under the open vial policies, you have to use them within four hours. Within four hours, they have to be used. So if I, I just take the opportunity to tell you more about the heat sensitivity, I can say that any vaccine which is produced, it is either heat sensitive or it is light sensitive or it is cold sensitive. That's it. So you can either have heat, light or cold. So if I see the oral polio vaccine, we all know it is very highly heat sensitive it is like so many plus i can put but uh, light sensitivity is okay types and uh, cold sensitivity it's not so much affected if i see the measles or the measles and rubella vaccine it is heat sensitive and light sensitive both cold is not so much affected but if i see the bcg if i see the japanese encephalitis if i see the rotavirus vaccine all these are like more of light sensitive and somewhat heat sensitive but they are not like cold sensitivity is not so much but uh, if i talk of uh, they are relatively heat stable these vaccines are relatively heat stable vaccines relatively heat stable bcg i'm not saying this is not bcg reconstituted it is bcg j and rotavirus if i say about uh, hepatitis b about uh, the uh, hepatitis b or the pentavalent vaccine about the pentavalent vaccine so this these vaccines these are also relatively heat stable but they are very much cold sensitive cold sensitive why do i say these are cold sensitive because uh, it must be astonishing for you to know that they are even sensitive to very slight variation that is they can freeze at 0 0.5 degree celsius so at minus 0.5 sorry not 0 0.5 it's minus 0 0.5 degree celsius they can freeze so with so much like they are at 0 degree celsius you can say that they freeze actually 
and then other vaccines like dpt you have you have uh, tetanus toxoid all the t series vaccines and uh, the injectable polio vaccines uh, these are also relatively heat stable nothing about the light but they are also very cold sensitive and they their freezing point is minus 3 degree celsius so these vaccines are like very cold or freeze sensitive so just to summarize this story you can remember this this is one of the very important uh, uh, like table that i have formed and many questions come on this so just to summarize this story can i say that uh, the heat sensitivity of the vaccine maximum heat sensitive is reconstituted bcg followed by oral polio vaccines followed by injectable polio vaccines followed by measles or measles rubella vaccine and that's it followed by rotavirus vaccines and all other vaccines are there and j vaccine and j vaccine <clears throat> if we talk of the free sensitivity the most free sensitive is hepatitis b it is slightly more than dpt and uh, more than like kind of pentavalent then we have uh, dpt or ipvs or tetanus toxoids so these are like your free sensitivity and heat sensitivity also it's important for you to know that whenever we are mixing vaccines whenever we need to dilute a vaccine <clears throat> whenever a diluent is to be added to the vaccine please remember that the diluent should be kept in the ilr for at least at least 24 hours before using or reconstituting why is it so because uh, there is a concept of something known as a thermal shock there is a concept of thermal shock that in case the diluent is not kept at the temperature same temperature as the vaccine is there then there is a thermal shock that there is death of <coughs> some vital microorganisms which may render the vaccine as non-potent so that's it for the diluents you need to remember please remember that the bcg vaccine uses the diluent that is normal saline the measles or the measles rubella vaccine has distilled water and the je vaccine has a special phosphate buffer these are acting as the diluents for the vaccine so that's it for uh, this small update on uh, immunization and uh, we'll carry on with immunization in another section where we'll be discussing other vaccines as well <clears throat> so any questions you have you're most welcome to ask on our whatsapp number 86990 or any comments or any doubts if you have you're most welcome to put on my facebook id m-u-k-h-m-o-h-i-t mukmohits community and medicine discussions so this is a group on facebook and you're most welcome to add this uh, add, uh, join this group on the facebook or you are welcome to post your comments on my page m-u-k-h m-o-h-i-t mukmohit dr this is my facebook page and uh, that's the whatsapp number so anyways whatever way you want whatever thing is suitable to you ask the doubts any videos you would like to hear from us in the upcoming session you're most welcome to put it on facebook or on whatsapp and uh, stay tuned <clears throat> all the very best for your upcoming aims exam pgi exam all the best keep shining thank you so much